Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria, the creator of Bahati Life Apothecary. Thank you so much for tuning in. On my left, I have the astrology chart pulled up for the Libra full moon, which is what we're gonna be talking about today. I also have some cards on my right and a few cards that I pulled out that were honestly just right in alignment, emphasis on the word alignment, with what I was feeling as I pulled the chart for the details of what it is that I wanted to share with you guys. Now, let me go ahead and start by saying this, that this Libra full moon happening on April 7th for the majority of us is really about coming into a deeper sense of alignment and a deeper purpose in our alignment with certain things within our life. Not only are we going to see this on a global level, not only have we been seeing this on a global level, but you're also going to be seeing this in your personal life. And this is what I want to talk to you about today in this video, how you can use this full moon in order to come into better alignment with things that are literally in your destiny. They're written in your chart. Um, for those of you guys that don't know, I'm a professional astrologer. I've been doing this for almost all of my life. I know that I look young, but I'm 32 at the point, time of me um, filming this video, and I've dedicated most of my life to the study of astrology, um, my intuition, and esoteric studies. Um, and I believe that um, all of our charts are a map of what we can accomplish of what we can attain and i also believe that when we track the position and the movement of the planets we can see how they're going to impact us here in our in our in our uh, personal lives and also what we can expect on a on a grand scale i believe that if you know how to work with these planets you can make that energy work for you and not against you and these are some things that we're going to be talking about today so all that all that being said the biggest message that's coming through for me for every single one of us is this idea of alignment and coming into harmony with things that are for our highest and greatest good and for our um, ultimately the highest potential that it is that we can see that we can achieve, uh, um, attain to, to master, to be, to influence is the word that just came through and also to experience. So we've been saying for a long time, you guys, I, I know I've been saying it. As an astrologer, I've been saying this a lot, is that we are breaking down the ways of the past, the, the ways that are antiquated, that no longer serve us. They haven't served us since, I don't know, for a long time. Centuries, generations and generations and generations, they haven't served us. And this is something that doesn't happen overnight. You definitely would not want this type of energy to happen overnight because it would be way too shocking to our system. Jupiter-Pluto conjunction and Saturn now moving to the sign of Aquarius. This is the energy that has genuinely, has truly, has brought in the energy of um, things like the coronavirus that has paralyzed our system, meaning that it has highlighted what hasn't worked for us and what isn't serving us and then pushes us to strive to do better because of these certain irritants. That's what it is that, it is that I'm going to call it, is there's irritants that create challenges that help us to grow. Okay, so not only, again, are we, not, are we seeing this in, on a global scale, but we're also going to see this in our personal lives. So when this energy happens, it, it literally it starts to occur. It starts to build up. Um, and this, is how, this has been building up for over two and a half years now. And when we start to see this breakdown, it starts off very subtle, but then it starts to get larger and larger and larger. I'm not going to talk about it in details in this video because I've shared it in so many other videos um, with uh, Saturn's moving to Capricorn and most of this energy of the planets sitting in the sign of Capricorn. Um, I can link those videos down below if you want to review it. But for the most part, what it is that I can see here is that in your personal life, you have been under the stress test is what it is that I'm going to call it. You've been stressed out or situations and circumstances are stressing you out in order to help you to change, to evolve, to develop into the person who will be able to master and be able to see to completion, see to fruition, this higher dream that is that you have for yourself. Basically, what it is that I just said and what it is that I'm saying is that sometimes, a lot of times in our lives, it's the challenges, it's the things that stress us out the most that make, that push us into a position where we have to study, we have to learn. And through that study, through that learning, we grow and then ultimately, inevitably, we take a test. 
Now, at the time of the full moon, the Libra full moon on April 7th, I do not see this for most people, but I do want to say what just popped up in my head is about 32% of people are going to have an actual test. Um, the, ma the majority of us are going to use this time in order to set intention, in order to help us to manifest what it is that we are ultimately seeing ourselves align with now and for this new future, this new wave. But if it wasn't for the breakdown of all of these things, of our life, of our relationships, of our career, etc., etc., even our health, if it wasn't for that breakdown, we wouldn't know to do differently we wouldn't even want to do differently it's the moments when we get challenged it's the moments when we're left to our own devices and we have to innovate we have to do differently that's when we experience a, a change if not we're just kind of stuck in a status quo doing the same thing repeating the same patterns and not ever growing from it not ever evolving and spirit the universe the planets would not they simply would not allow it Okay, so as human beings, we are designed to evolve, that we're wired to evolve. So there's certain things that will help that process along, and it charts like this are exactly what's happening in order to make that happen. What's beautiful about this Libra full moon is the fact that um, all of this, it almost seems like, I don't want to say a diamond in the rough, I want to say like almost like a sapphire. It's something very unique for that is hidden for you to discover or for you to capitalize on that you might not have asked about before. Let's say Libra rules relationships and um, you know working with others and compromising. Let's say there's certain areas of your life that you simply would not compromise on and it has impacted your relationships. It, it has impacted your ability to have harmonious relationships. That's the energy that Libra rules. And at, because of all that you have experienced in your past relationships, now keep in mind, this isn't just the last few weeks, this is the last few years. Because of how you experience your relationships, you start to realize like, I should probably be a little bit more forgiving with others and also myself in certain things. Or maybe you have overly compromised. Maybe you had a severe lack of boundaries that has created a space where your relationships were no, mo no more harmonious. That's the thing about Libra energy is that it's not, it's very quick to say whatever makes you happy makes me happy. What I will do what you're doing, I will mirror what it is that you're doing so that we can harm, harm, like work in harmony together so that we can align together. But if you're not in alignment with things that are there to serve you and that are, that have your best interest at heart just as much as you have their best interest at heart, you're no longer in harmony, you're no, mo no more in alignment, and the balance of that, the scales of that will start to tip, they will start to topple, and the relationship itself will crumble. So instead of internalizing that and being like, well, what did I do wrong, or it was it something that I done, or I'm going to overly compensate in my next relationship, or I'm going to overly give in my next whatever, it, it's teaching you, and what Saturn Energy has been doing, it's been teaching you that there needs to be healthy boundaries and there needs to be healthy rules and healthy structure so that compromising and harmonizing with something else or someone else is more easy, more effortless, and is supported by the universe. Now, I'm saying all that to say that that's exactly what this Libra full moon is going to bring into your life. It's not only is it the awareness, because the awareness has been there. You have seen how, how much you have given to other, other people, other things, other circumstances, or even to yourself, and realize that, okay, this is probably not going to work for me moving forward because it hasn't worked in the past. So maybe it's not that you have done anything wrong, but maybe you chose the wrong partner, or maybe your shadow, side, your shadow self um, wanted to align with certain things that didn't serve your higher purpose, but they were there to help you to heal a wound. So at the time of this Libra full moon, my loves, I'm seeing that you are actively choosing. This is not a brand new awareness for you. I see that this is something that you've already known. I see that this is something that you have discovered about yourself and that you discovered about your relationships that you are now saying, okay, with this awareness, I am going to speak out. I am going to set intention for a different experience for myself, having known all of the knowledge of what it is that I've gained up until this point. Luckily for you, Venus is moving through the sign of Gemini. And Venus rules the energy of Libra, but Venus is now lending its energy to the, to the, um, to the sign Gemini. 
and Gemini is all about exploring its options and keeping things that exploration on a more super superficial and fun space it's something that we enjoy that is intriguing to us that um, catches our attention and that we have fun with it we really have a fun we don't want to spend too much time dissecting it we just want to keep it in a lighter space we want to keep it in a lighter, lighter energy and that's what it is that I'm seeing at the time of this Libra full moon is that not only is the sun sitting in the sign of Aries, which is giving us something to work towards, that is giving us something to strive towards, not only is the moon moving through the sign of uh, Libra, and that's the energy of this full moon, and it allows us to not only strive towards it, but to harmonize with it, to come into alignment with it, but Venus moving through the sign of Gemini says, well, let's also have fun with it. It doesn't have to be so heavy and cumbersome and burdensome all the time. It could actually be something that is that we thoroughly enjoy and that we learn from it. It's an engaging conversation. It's witty dialogue. So not only could this be relationships and infusing this energy into your relationships, but it could be how you, your, your relationship with yourself the aspects of yourself, your relationship with your family, your relationship with your friends, that maybe you guys have been in a space where things have been so heavy and so stressful, and now you could be like, you know what, let's play a game, let's play a board game, let's let's make puzzles, let's make this more fun. If this has to do with your work, if this has to do with your home environment, I can really see so many of you guys bringing in more engaging and lighter information Sometimes, I'm even seeing this within my own work, and I feel like I'm ready to start shuffling the cards. Look, you have justice here, the scales at the very bottom of this deck. Look how perfect this is. But in my own life, I realized in my work how serious and how heavy my messages can be. But at the time when I started sharing my messages, was it a point in the world where these messages needed to be shared and they weren't going to be so lighthearted all the time. And I started seeing how I needed to balance that out. That it wasn't always, or it shouldn't always be so stressful and so um, like a weight on our soul all the time. And that it is good to match the intent, this um, transform, transformative message and the intensity of these messages with more lighthearted, with more lighthearted approaches, with having fun, with bringing joy. And I'm also seeing that for you guys, that in your own work, everyone's different, but in your own work, with the type of level of work that is, whatever work that is that you do, or whatever projects that is that you're working on, I'm really seeing you stepping into a space of infusing it with more beauty, with more, um, um, I don't want to say intrigue, but how you communicate and the, the messages that you put out there, the information that is that you put out there. Let's say it's not your work. It could be your connections. It could be your um, um, people that you work with, like around you. You can infuse, you can set intention in your work relationships or your connection with the, with the world, with society, with this spirit of brotherhood, with seeing the similarities between seeing more of the celeb, celeb um, not celebrities, but seeing more of the similarities than what makes you different, especially Gemini energy. It's the sign of the twins. That's the other thing too, my loves, is that I would not be surprised at the time of this full moon if you are setting intention and becoming more clear on your life partner, your twin flame, your soulmate, putting that energy out there we have not only is mercury moving to the sign of pisces pisces rules the energy of a higher level of relationships and love and expression and communication um and why am i talking about communication expression because mercury is moving to the sign of pisces right now but mercury sends this beautiful beam of of light and energy over to the vertex point the vertex point is in scorpio now scorpio is very very intense and when Mercury, and, and the vertex point is about faded encounters, so obviously there's a connection here, the potential for a connection here that could be created that has so much depth, that is so profound. But the thing is, is that the planets are not falling in place in positions that are so energetically draining outside of Pluto, 
um, and Jupiter currently right now. Um, that is felt more on a global level and how it how the global like how politics and government bleeds into that's why so much of us that's why all of us are in isolation for the majority of the planet we're in isolation right now but um and the economy is kind of stressed out but really how this works is for the most part you take it and you i don't say you take it with a grain of salt because that's not the case but you help to bring messages of light and laughter and joy and hope and healing, but healing from a space that isn't energetically draining, it's uplifting. That's really what it is that I'm getting now from you guys is um, focusing on more enlightening messages and being compassionate and considered of each other, being ca compassionate and considered of yourself and really looking into what it is that you need in order to, if you're not feeling those things, to infuse that energy more into your life. This could be taking classes that you've been wanting to take or signing up for classes or online communities that provide you with um, you know, information or a space of neighbor neighbor energy like really connecting with people who you know even your neighbors you might be linking up with your neighbors or linking up with people let's say you go to a swimming class and you end up making friends with the people at the pool those types of energies like you might there there could be like a facebook page that's created there's so many interesting energies here of coming into alignment with um, like-minded people and celebrating your similarities not your differences even if it's just the fact that you guys like ice cream you know it could be anything so yeah looking at this right now my loves look at the center of our reading we have the temperance card we also have the ace of wands this is what it is that i'm saying is that with temperance this is about what's really standing out to me is preserving your energy and preserving your happiness and your joy and the ace of wands says don't let it be things that drain you that um, pull energy from you that pull energy out from you this is about having healthy boundaries and making sure that you're not I don't want to say that everybody is accessible to you but not everybody needs to be accessible to you at the same time align with those that have your frequency that their intention is not to be a leech or that their negative energy doesn't um, embed in you. That's why it's so important that you're paying very, very close attention to discernment and who and what you're sharing your energy with and not taking anything personal and not internalizing it. Um, that's something that I was talking about before the coronavirus um, started hitting. The next thing that I'm seeing is Ten of Cups, um, Seven of Swords, and the Hermit card. All of these cards were reversed though. This is energy that's from the past. And this is saying that literally things are working themselves out. I'm also seeing that you may not see how things are working themselves out because it may not be so obvious to you or so clear to you. But I believe that you should be setting on setting your intention. You should be setting your focus on a higher vibration. You should be setting your intention and your focus, not on what it is that you can see on paper right now, but what it is that you can see through your third eye, what it is that you are visualizing for yourself. These prophecies, these visions that it is that you've been having for yourself, for your life, set them into motion now by stating it, by putting it out there and allowing yourself to be changed in a way that is constructive to match the, vi to match the vibration of what it is that you're um, ultimately going to be setting intention for, that you're going to be manifesting. At the very top of the re this reading, we have Ace of Cups, the Chariot, and the Three of Cups. Now, the Chariot was reversed and so was the Ace of Cups. This shows me that at the time of this full moon, which makes a lot of sense, that emotions are gonna be high. You might be emotionally triggered, you might, be, you might be emotionally sensitive. There might be some information that comes through, especially with Mercury um, con, um, trining the vertex point and the vertex falling in the sign of Scorpio. This is some information that becomes clear to you in a brief moment um, that really can throw you in a, a tailspin. It can really be like, oh my gosh, I was picking up on this intuitively. I could never confirm it, and now I'm seeing it. I do want to say that it's it's hard. It's hard because Mercury is still moving through the sign of Pisces, and information is not clear. Information is not precisely clear, and we need to give it some time for the dust to really settle, even after Mercury exits out of Pisces and moves into the sign of Aries before we even act. It's very, um, it's very, like easy sometimes 
to react first and say that, okay, these are the facts, it's not a fact. You don't know that it's a fact until it's confirmed a fact, and even a fact is can be changed later on and with more information that shows that this is no longer a fact. So what it, basically what I'm saying is that when the chariot is reversed and with Ace of Cups reversed, this is, you don't, it can, you can really tip, the, the cart can really be tipped as far as your momentum and your feeling that you're moving forward in a way that is constructive to your goals. It can be tipped if you allow your emotions to get the best of you. And that's the one thing that I don't want to happen. Um, I do want to say that the moon is sitting directly opposite of Chiron, Chiron the wounded healer. Um, it's not exact, but it's the moon. So the energy of that still bleeds into the energy of the full moon and what is that we're going to be feeling. And when Chiron, when we have placements like this, it can really hit an emotional, emotionally sensitive spot. And I feel like this could be information that, is, that you hear, but don't allow it to zap your, in, your energy. At the very root of this reading, it feels as though you guys are feeling like there's a, a space that you can be triggered. You can feel like it doesn't feel like the universe is working for you. It's working against you. That is simply not the case. Again, it's there's a bigger a bigger picture that's happening here with the temperance card. All things are taken into consideration and all things are helping you to set intention and for you to set intention for your highest and greatest good. Um, but again, I just this is just kind of what it is that I'm seeing and what it is I'm feeling and what's being reflected within the cards. At the root of this reading, we have five of swords reversed, three of pentacles reversed, ten of swords reversed. This is energy that says it feels like you're working against me, and that's simply not the case. I, again, want to remind you to keep your sights focused on this higher vision, this higher prophecy that is going to be fulfilled over your life and that you should be setting intention for. Something that it is that I love the most is moving forward into the future. We have the Wheel of Fortune card, we have the Sun card reversed, and we also have Strength Upright. This confirms to me everything, you guys. Everything that it is that I'm seeing within the chart and everything that it is that I'm feeling within my spirit is that there's certain circumstances that we simply cannot control. This is the energy of Capricorn you know, just kind of so much summed up in one big nutshell and also the energy of Pluto that it connects to our karma, it connects to fate. And these are things that we have somewhat of a say into it, say into it because we have free will. But at the same time, there's certain things that have to happen. And I want to be so clear with you guys. And you know, if you are a friend to me and have been a subscriber to the Bahati Life YouTube channel, I will never promise anything that I don't see anything that I don't feel in order to blow smoke up your ass and make it be like, okay, we're releasing. We're finally at the end cycle. We are in, we've been in the middle of this end, not the end cycle, but we've been in the middle of this great major transformation. When everyone was saying, okay, 2020 is going to be our year. 2019 is going to be our year. I'm like, we're not done yet. That's very human thinking and, and very, um, short-term thinking to be like, okay, that the universe works with our timetable. That, okay, we have 365 days, and after the 365 days, there's going to be a brand new year. That's literally, that's totally off alignment with the astrological cycle, and our year technically doesn't start on January 1st of whatever year it is. So, um, that's something that I want to say is that these, I don't want you guys to be defeated and feel disappointed and frustrated because you're like, well, when is it going to end? It's we're in the middle of major transformation and this is something that's been needing to happen for so long and it ushers in this new wave this new this new wealth this new security this new stability this new healthy living healthy lifestyles health, healthy social structures that's how amazing this is so you don't want to power through this and and go back to our old normal we want to invite and embrace this new normal but also capitalize from the opportunities that are making themselves available in a time of total destruction and total rebirth. That is, that's something that's so amazing. So don't take in internally, ingest and absorb what's happening and be like, oh my God, let me panic. No, you have to disconnect, especially under the energy of Libra. Libra wants to harmonize, Libra wants to align, but spirit says do not harmonize, harmonize and align with things that are not good for you that are toxic because they will take the life right out of you. 
They will take the energy right out of you. They will drain you. And we want to protect you. That's why we gave you the, your heart. That's why we gave you your third eye. That's why we gave you intuition. And we also gave you a voice. And we also gave you will so that you can protect yourself so that you're not made vulnerable to things that you should not be, um, you know, connected with and building upon. So look at that and say that, look, the, the in the future and what's working for us is a strength card. The strength card is not about you forcing your will over anything or anyone. It's about you approaching it with compassion, consideration, understanding, and an openness, a willingness to be open and vulnerable to the right things at the right time and giving those things a chance, okay? So, and with the sun card here, this is all for your highest and greatest good. This is all for your happiness. This is all for your health, your vitality. However, the sun card is reversed. So this is showing me that you may not see it right away, but just because you don't see it right away because of the full moon bringing all of those emotions up to the surface doesn't mean that it isn't there, that it isn't happening. And you are going to see that the intentions that, is that you're setting at the time of this Libra full moon are going to manifest themselves. They are going to reveal themselves. But don't allow your perspective on what you can see here right in front of you to cloud the fact that you're, you know, things are, that things are getting better. They are getting better. And it, it, it's so important that every single one of us is setting intention for the things that will make us happy, the things that will make us healthy, because that will ultimately make us as a whole, as a world, happy and healthy and moving from a space of love. That's where we're in right now is to release this old um, antiquated ways, these old toxic ways and step into a space where how we move, how we react to each other, how we react to our world and our leadership that helps to create um, control and, and structure and rules that benefit all of us are actually set in, set in place to benefit all of us. Okay, you guys, so I know that that's a lot. Um, really, I you know how I am. I like to, to give you everything. I'm a Virgo, so I don't like to miss any any tiny detail, and I want to make sure that my messages are, are clear and focused. So um, if this benefited you, um, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Even if it didn't and you support the channel, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Feel free to share this video with your friends if you'd like. Make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.